McDonald's has had a history with weird mascots. Ronald McDonald, Mayor McCheese, and uh, Grimace. Let's not talk about Grimace. But none of these characters have the luminescence to be the strangest of the McDonald's characters. The moon-headed crooner with a penchant for stealing copyrighted Bobby Darin songs. Today on Weird History Food, we're talking Mac tonight, McDonald's forgotten moon-headed mascot. But before we get started, please subscribe to the Weird History Food channel. And leave us a comment with what forgotten corners of fast food commercials you would like to hear about. Alright, everyone buckle up, because we're going to the moon. McDonald's Mac, aka the Mac Man, was born out of sheer desperation, as so many terrible ideas often are. By the 1980s, the Burger Wars had begun, resulting in cutthroat campaigns and ballooning ad budgets as McDonald's found itself fighting for first place with Wendy's and Burger King. Both, like regular television villains, were trying to muscle in on McDonald's territory. Burger King in particular decided to go hard at the Golden Arches, telling McDonald's employees that they should leave the room when the ad was on to avoid humiliation. Eventually, companies woke up to the fact that their spending on these campaigns had gotten out of hand, with excessive advertising costs causing quarterly losses. Listen, it's a war, and you gotta spend money to make money. It was during the tail end of the Burger Wars that McDonald's turned to ad agency Needham, Harper, and Steers for help. The firm came back with the idea of the McDonald Land, a way to expand past commercials and into little children's hearts everywhere via Happy Meal toys and Jungle Gym play places. The campaign was a massive success with children, as evidenced by the prices some of those old Happy Meal toys go for on eBay. Should have gotten into Happy Meal speculation instead of playing Little League. But kids notoriously don't have a lot of money, aren't able to drive, and don't get a say in setting a time for family meals, usually. Consequently, nobody was coming to McDonald's for dinner when Playlands were closed and the kids were asleep. By the mid-80s, McDonald's was sick of watching others eat their lunch. They needed an adult mascot that spoke to grown-up sensibilities. And if you've seen our video on the Arch Deluxe, you'll probably guess how well McDonald's understood how to appeal to adults. The answer is poorly, but like horror show poorly. To boost dinnertime sales, McDonald's turned to an ad agency, Davis, Johnson, Mogul, and Columbato, who came up with the idea for the Moon Man. He would later be christened to Mac. With a budget of $500,000, it took a whole year to conceive and execute four spots on local TV of a fever dream known as Mac Tonight. Mac was the epitome of moon-headed coolness. He did all the adult things, like play piano and sing old jazz standards. Mac was indeed an instant hit. Our moon-headed friend would go on to star in at least 27 of his own commercials over the next three years. But the law finally caught up to Mac Tonight. After a lengthy court case, old Mac was retired in 1989. So what happened? Well, first, let's start at the beginning. Mac Tonight is actually a play on Mac the Knife, a moritat or murder ballad from Kurt Weill and Bertolt Brecht's 1928 The Three Penny Opera. And while the lyrics have changed over the years as different translations have sprouted up, they all start the same way, with a verse about the shark-like teeth and knife of the song's anti-hero, McKeith. McKeith is a killer who leaves victims on sidewalks oozing life with his trusty knife. In other words, not quite the obvious choice for a fast food mascot, but that's just us. So how did a violent ballad from a socialist opera about the pitfalls of capitalism become the inspiration for a humanoid moon hawking hamburgers? We have Louis Armstrong to thank. After hearing an English adaptation of the song, Armstrong's jazzy cover of Mac the Knife hit number 20 on the charts in 1956. Three years later, singer Bobby Darin decided to do his own swing cover of Armstrong's cover, of Mark Blitzstein's English cover, of this German opera ballad. That's a lot of covers. America went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs for Darren's song. It hit number one in 1959. Who could have predicted that Americans would love hearing about the salacious crimes of a deranged killer? You know, besides podcast true crime hosts and Netflix documentaries. McDonald's took the gamble that their grown-up customers' love of nostalgic pop hits would override any squeamishness they might associate with the song's subject. So they copied the tune, changed the lyrics to be about 6 p.m. chow time, and gave the song to their spindly new mascot. Lest you think that one creepy backstory was enough for McDonald's to hang its hat on, the Mac Tonight spots took inspiration from another pop culture anomaly. Everything from Mac's pale complexion to his dark shades and black suit was all in 
service of evoking a very specific, very 1980s figure, the glitchy AI Max Headroom. Max Headroom, voiced by Matt Frewer, was a big deal had his own show and his own line of toys. You could find Headroom referenced in everything from Back to the Future Part 2 to the most famous TV hijackings in history. He was also very much an adult character from the world of after-hours programming, which McDonald's hoped would translate into adult interest in their own similar creation. So let's run through this checklist. A mascot with an oversized California raisin's head singing a famous song about a serial killer with the lyrics reworked to be about late night cheeseburger runs. Sounds like a recipe for success, McDonald's style. So who was looking out behind the giant Max Headroom glazed eyes of Mac tonight? Why, none other than the beloved character actor and super tall guy, Doug Jones. You probably know the 6'3 actor from one of his 150 plus film credits, most of which are monsters or monster adjacent. For example, he played the creature in The Shape of Water, both the fawn and that freaky eyeball monster in Pan's Labyrinth, and the zombie in Hocus Pocus. Jones was hired to play Mac, the new crescent-headed jazz crooner, based on his height alone. A singer provided Mac's voice. Why was it so important that Mac be tall when he was sitting down for all his commercials? because the marketing for McDonald's secret adult sauce is always about traumatizing the children. And Slenderman limbed moon men are a solid child frightening gambit. The company has a history of building campaigns around kids hating certain menu items for being too grown up, as if that alone will make their parents more inclined to purchase it. But our nightmare fuel was Jones's good fortune, as it provided one of his earliest breaks in the industry. For the 30th anniversary in 2017, the actor tweeted a throwback photo of him holding Mac's head, calling the three-year gig the start of my days on your TVs. Despite his unsettling appearance and creepy song, people loved Mac Tonight. The four regional West Coast spots were instant hits, which was enough to convince McDonald's to take the campaign national in the first months of 1987. By that fall, Mac was crooning about dinner time just like a burger-happy Bobby Darren on TV sets across the country. So McDonald's decided it was time to bring Mac out of the TV and make this moon crooner an in-store experience. Mac Tonight Live saw real-life piano players don Mac Tonight costumes and play miniature concerts at McDonald's restaurants. When the IRL Max played at McDonald's venues, crowds could number upwards of 1,500 people strong. Taking a page from the Chuck E. Cheese playbook, animatronic Max began popping up at Mickey D's locations too. Restaurants went from being kid-centric to kid nightmarish. Eventually, as all things do, the animatronics started to break down. Rather than remove them from venues, they were left as statues to the moon god. But I've never seen a Mac tonight in a McDonald's, you're probably saying, like a real Willy Wonka tour kid. Don't believe me? How dare you? Why would I lie? But see for yourself, over by yonder Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. Minutes in the park, a mechanical Mac sings at the world's largest entertainment McDonald's. Also known as Epic McD's, this McDonald's is an 18,700 square foot structure, with attractions such as a 22 foot tall playland and 2,000 square feet of arcade games. At Epic McD's, you can get more than just the 99 cent menu. Full omelets, pizza, a pasta bar, and a build-your-own burger station are offered exclusively at Epic McD's. And housed in this half acre of land sits the last remaining Mac tonight, perched jauntily by his piano, frozen as a testament to late 80s marketing hubris. Some say, late at night, the sounds of reappropriated German opera can be heard echoing through Epic McD's, followed by a sweet baritone whispering, I still love you, baby. Having properly terrified children all over the world, it looked like Mac might be the celestial mascot to finally displace Ronald as McDonald's official spokesman. So what stopped the meteoric rise of McDonald's star moon? The long arm of copyright law. See, Mac the Knife was a hugely popular song. It had been covered by everyone, including Frank Sinatra, Marianne Faithful, The Psychedelic Furs, Michael Buble. Heck, Liberace did five covers. Guess he just really wanted to nail it. But none of those covers had reached the levels of success of Bobby Darin's 1958 version. Two Grammys and a number one spot on the charts confirmed the definitive Mac cover. The Mac Tonight slots borrowed heavily from Bobby Darin's version even taking the singer's distinct mannerisms, style, and swagger. In fact, the only thing McDonald's didn't get from Darren was permission to use his song and likeness. When Bobby's son Dodd caught wind of the Mac Tonight campaign, he immediately sued the fast food brand. It turns out that McDonald's had never paid one cent to the Darren estate for the rights to Bobby's likeness. Along with damages, 
Dodd sought an injunction to halt all Mac ads. This was a huge blow to McDonald's, who planned their whole shtick around its new mascot, even going back on their original no kids policy to start hawking him in Happy Meals. And though the suit was eventually dropped, the damage was done. Mac was deader than the victims of his namesake. Or was he? Mac had been shelled, and McDonald's took that to mean adults were done eating at their establishments. Desperate, they looked to Ronald for help, and though the adultification of the clown for the brand's subsequent Arch Deluxe campaign in the mid-1990s was no less terrifying than Mac Tonight, it was way less successful. As for Mac, he's been recycled several times, first in a 1997 commercial cameo that made the formerly cool moon seem well, less cool. A decade later, Mac popped up in a South Asian campaign that was well-received, only to disappear again. Sadly, these days, many young people recognize Mac as the Moon Man from a series of racist memes. Poor Mac, he just wanted to sing about an affordable dinner. So what do you think? Who is your favorite fast food mascot? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Weird History Food.